What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're doing a tour of Norwegian infrastructure and all the different ways that you can charge your electric car here. Today we're starting with some street parking for long-term parking. There's apartments all around us uh, and there's multiple type two charge points just along the street for anyone to use and park and charge their car overnight during the day, whatever the case may be. So over here we have a ride sharing vehicle and here is the type two station. And in Europe you bring your own cable, so it's just type two, you plug in there, tap your card, hit start, just like that you're charging. There's an ID3 using it right there. Leaf, Skoda, Enyaq, e-golf, all sorts of vehicles. So here we are at a city type charging spot. These are almost all 50 kilowatt chargers, variety of different hardware. And then we also have type two, just like we saw on the street there. And pretty good utilization here, more type two along the back wall there as well. So this allows a lot of people in apartments or people just coming in shopping here or whatever uh, to charge rather quickly rather than just the on the street AC charging. And here we are with more public charging at Viglindsparken which is a sculpture garden, which is the largest sculpture garden from the same artist, I think in the world, or at least in Norway. Uh, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six type two uh, units and each have two plugs on them. So you can charge two cars from each and a great spot to just stop and charge your car while you're enjoying nature and the museums and the surrounding areas. Here we have some more street DC fast charging, mostly 50 kilowatt units, actually I think all entirely 50 kilowatt units. Behind us we have some car dealerships and a Circle K, that, that way that's your amenity when you're charging. But this used to just be a public area that was parking and Shell Recharge installed these units, well, previously Fortum. So uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. Um, and yeah, one of them's actually a hypercharger, I believe 150 kilowatt. And here we have some additional Circle K chargers behind us as well, 50 kilowatt uh, tritium units with an e-golf and uh, EQC charging on them. And here we're in an office park, underground parking ramp, and we have so many charging stations, probably over a hundred, I would guess, and each one can do two cars. So let me show you guys that. So here we have that, we also have status indicator lights. And again, being in Europe, you have type two, so you plug in, activate with RFID, here's the instructions in Norwegian, of course, and it's through the Easy Park system, which is the parking garage. Smart, I3, Polestar, Polestar, E up, not charging, because they don't need to charge. You got an e-golf and just can see chargers basically as far as your eye can see all these lighted units along the wall and it's on multiple levels of this parking garage. shopping complex we have Zaptec uh, level two or sorry type two chargers and these are actually paid through Epcoa flow which is the parking network and what's really cool is we have this like bus bar type conduit so you got this bus bar going across and then you have a little unit up here and then that's pulling down to the unit itself but pretty cool to see that and this is four hours free parking but it is paid charging and here we have another office park with tons and tons of charging. These are all either 7.4 or 22 kW chargers, uh, depending on what the input is, if it's single phase or if it's three phase. This row is pretty empty, but we have two rows over there that have pretty good utilization. And here we have a lot higher utilization, lots more cars plugged in, and we actually have an Xpong right here as well, so that's pretty cool. And here we have a whole bunch of hotel charging much bigger scale than I've ever seen in North America. 
uh, I would guess probably about 25 or so, maybe even more than that. And a huge Chungi, I think seven seat SUV. You don't get these in the US, but it's cool to see and probably would be a welcome addition to the market. And this is pretty slick, the charge level indicator on the pillar. And here we are at a mall uh, Sandvika store center. So here we have a bunch of type two stations, uh, Kia Soul Electric. And the real thing here are these matter 50 kilowatt uh, tritium DC fast chargers, which I think makes a lot of sense in the mall segment because these you're spending approximately one hour and you'll get a full charge versus what we typically see in North America is only AC or level two or type two charging. These are more expensive to install, but they'll, they make a lot more sense for the use case and the typical dwell time of the place. We're now at the Leerstopen Supercharger in Leerskog in Norway. This is a 40 stall version three supercharger. So you see a whole bunch over here. We have five of the version three cabinets, transformer, then we have a bunch of stalls in the middle and we have even more V3 cabinets over there, five more and more stalls all the way over here and an additional transformer. So this is essentially set up as two separate sites from an infrastructure perspective but one cohesive installation as far as the user experience. And I suspect that they may have also secured this additional area for future expansion, but this is just a huge installation. Here we have a station off of E18. We have four Tesla stalls, which is really small. Version two, we have a Mare Delta charger. And then we actually have a Circle K with some ABB stuff. We'll go over there in just a moment. There's also some Tritium 50 kilowatt but overall, this is a very small installation. But it is right off the interstate here. You can see you can get right back on there. You can see just all the traffic here. So here we have 250 kilowatt tritium units, 250 kilowatt ABB Terra 150s. Then we also have some mare stations over here. So one Delta and two others, uh, 50 kilowatt, and then that's 150, and it's at Circle K. So here we are at Burger King. There's a shell here as well. This is a Tesla Supercharger version two. This is the Lear South station, I believe. Here we have Mirror with a bunch of Delta DC fast chargers. Kind of cool little canopy, but not really the most functional. Doesn't really make sense. And here we have something actually pretty cool. These are Neo DC fast chargers with terrible cable management or none existing at all. There's the power cabinet for it and Neo battery swap. So you pull in here and then I believe it's pretty much fully automated that the bottom opens up kind of and then it swaps out the battery and then you leave with a fully charged battery and everything. Pretty cool. So here we have a new Circle K charge location going in off of the side of the road here in Greyland. And there's some existing chargers over here, two 50 kilowatt tritium units, two or and 250 kilowatt tritium units. And then there's actually some mare chargers all the way down there at the end as well. But this is going to be a huge expansion. You can see each one of these squares here is going to be a charger or at least a future designated spot for a charger be some picnic areas and it's just going to be a great resting stop on essentially a rest stop location right off the highway here. We're in Kulerod, Norway. Here are some chem power stations being installed, the chem power power cabinet. More there. There's some uh, uh, grown contact mare chargers, more mare chargers over there and there's a huge Tesla installation all the way down there. So this is a huge charging hub. We've got a hotel, kind of a little shopping thing, and a shell station. And here we have a Larvik Circle K. 
We have Ionity stations here. More stations are gonna be going in there, some Circle K, 50 kilowatts. And actually on the other side of the diesel area here, we have a fairly large Tesla installation as well. So lots of charging right off the interstate here. We're now at Circle K Telemark's Porton, and here we have uh, six ABB Terra HP 150 kilowatt units. And here we have a ABB Terra 184 and two ABB Terra 54, quite a few spots. And then over there we have some Mare 50 kilowatt units as well, along with quite a few superchargers too. So you can see the start of them. I believe there are 12, possibly even more superchargers all along this back area, truck diesel, car wash, and right off kind of a main interchange here. So here we are charging in Babla on a 300 kilowatt hypercharger. This is a huge site for Circle K. And let me show you some of the chargers here. So the hypercharger, tons of Tesla chargers, 50 kit kilowatt tritium units, more 50 kilowatt tritium units, and a bunch of 150 kilowatt tritium units over there. Gas pumps, nice store, some advertising boards. There's a uh, bus or RV toilet emptier, bunch of truck and bus parking over there. It's time for lunch. What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today you're joining me in Kongsburg Port in Norway and we have six chargers under the canopy at a Circle K. This is kind of the gas station of the future. Let me show you guys around. So you pull in over here, you come in, the first thing you see are the chargers and they're under the canopy. They have a dedicated canopy just for the charging. Little kids play area, there's solar on top of the canopy. Even though the solar doesn't make a huge impact in the overall charging energy use, it's still good to see that. They have battery storage over here, giant transformer for all the power necessary here. Let's walk over. So in Norway, they have these transformers that kind of look like little houses, which is kind of cool. And then over here, like I mentioned, is battery storage. I don't know the size of the battery, but it's in there and then it has the thermal management for it as well. And this is actually a two level store. So you can come in, go up the stairs. There's a lounge, I'll show you that in just a moment, but it's really nice. Vacuums for while you're charging your car some uh, paper towels, trash can, basically everything you would need as you're charging. Propane swap, some outdoor seats, if it's nice out. There's a car wash all the way over here as well, windshield washer fluid. You can see how large the site is, and it's right off of, I believe this is E18? I could be wrong. They have another vacuum over here if you drive a, um, a gas vehicle. And they only have three gas pumps that can serve six cars at once. And then let's just go inside here quick, and I'll show you guys inside there as well. If you walk in, you have coffee and all sorts of great offers.
And upstairs you have the full lounge and everything. There's another restroom up here just for EV drivers or really anyone. You got power outlets, USB ports underneath the chairs here. You can power all your devices. And here we can see the chargers from above. So you can see the solar panels going up on top of the canopy. And then these are each 300 kilowatt Alpatronics hyperchargers and they can do two cars at once. So they all have both CCS, two of those, and then one Chattermo each. And you can see the vacuums as well with the designated spots. And you have a pretty nice view here while you're charging. And I'll show you guys some drone photos as well so you can see the solar panels and everything a little better. But overall, I think this is a super cool concept. I hope this comes to North America soon. Um, it's awesome to see that charging is being prioritized uh, as a fuel and as an important amenity needed for drivers traveling. Uh, they have really high market share of EVs here. I believe it was 92% in January of all vehicles sold. And they're at about 25% of all vehicles on the road are electric at this point being driven. Uh, so it's really cool to see this. Really curious what your guys' thoughts are. And if you have any questions, let me know. Comment down below. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.